Okay, you have seven minutes. Uh, I'm over. I, I need to do something with my time here, so I'm just... Yeah, okay. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, Mr. Speaker, quite frankly, uh, side opposition's case today has been a three-ring circuit. Uh, <laughs> side opposition, as my partner stated, has an incredibly vague plan to get five elephants to every man, woman, and child on this planet. How are they going to transport the elephants? They never went over that under Are they going to uh, are they going to herd them over the Alps like Hannibal? <laughs> Elephant jokes. <laughs> These are actually points. <laughs> no, let's first let's uh, let's go over some of the points uh, that side opposition brought up. Uh, one of the first things that struck me, uh, Mr. Speaker, was that side opposition tried to prejudice you guys against uh, side governments not giving people five elephants. <laughs> <to get started. laughs> He declared that they had an unexpected burden in defending the five elephant plan. <laughs> Quite frankly, Mr. Speaker, the five elephant plan is an institution of our society, like sliced bread and other things of that nature. <laughs> <laughs> to say that this is an unexpected burden is to say that defending health care is an unexpected burden. <laughs> Speaking of which, do the elephants get health care? <laughs> <laughs> when my elephants go to the hospital, <laughs> they should need their health care. <laughs> Another point that the side opposition brought up was that ivory was incredibly useful, and that with the five elephants we're all magically going to get, we would be able to use that ivory to important things. Do you know how many pianos you can make out of five elephants? <laughs> Probably like a third of a piano. What am I going to do with a third of a piano? <laughs> Quite frankly, studies have shown that most pianists actually only use about a third of a piano. <laughs> Um, I'll give that to you. <laughs> but, so let me ask you this. Where's the wood going to come from? <laughs> Elephants aren't made of wood. <laughs> now, the other thing we've seen today is a little bit of sketchy math uh, by side opposition. And I'm going to draw some of that math on the board. <laughs> so, how many people did he say were in this room? Let's just, you know what, we'll accept that. We'll accept his axiom. He said there were 17 people in the room. 17 is a prime number. <laughs> just log that <laughs> Now, coincidentally, there are five elephants for every person. Five is also a prime number. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's <laughs> I'm sure. I'm, yeah. Now he said that 17 times five <laughs> is. <laughs> I almost forgot to say the date. <laughs> 85 is not a prime number. <laughs> I remember my math correctly. A prime times a prime. Is a prime. <laughs> <laughs> you know who came up with that? Uh, you know who came up with that? Nothing. Euclid. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you know where Euclid was from? Greece. <laughs> do you know where Greece is near? Rome. <laughs> Do you know who fought the Carthaginians? Rome. Do you know what the Carthaginians used in battle? <gasps> Elephants. <laughs> Need I say more, Mr. Speaker? <laughs> <laughs> Another point that's not <laughs> They said, that Indian elephants and African elephants could coexist. <laughs> and in fact, we should treat them like elephants. <laughs> Do you know what this sounds like to me, Mr. Speaker? The melting pot. <laughs> Side opposition isn't respecting the Indian and African elephants' culture. <laughs> 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 Elephant 
good kind is a mosaic, Mr. Speaker. You've read a lot. Mr. Speaker, I think I've said more than enough. <laughs> Implied more than enough to show that side up is by elephant case. Uh, it's not only a, a huge burden on the government to disprove, <laughs> but untenable. <laughs> but I'm gonna get a little bit serious. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> Speaker, I can't really see you, but <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker, in our day and age, one of the greatest schisms of humanity is the inability to let go of a grudge. It's the inability for one culture to forget the past harms of another culture. It's the sins of the father being passed down to the sins of the son. <laughs> the son's sins. He gets the father's sins. <laughs> the communist property of sins. <laughs> we outside government think that this being a problem, a problem that we're not able to deal with in humankind, um, a problem that we're with humans, humans uh, flightiness, we are unable to overcome. How then, Mr. Speaker, are we to overcome an elephant's memory? Because <laughs> elephants never forgive, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> they never forget, and they never forget. <laughs> <laughs> that is my opinion on this matter. Also, <laughs> Carthage must be obliterated. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. So what I'm going to do for you today is kind of go a little bit deeper into the analysis that we've heard uh, about, you know, most about, like, social cohesion and kind of bringing societies across the world together. Um, and I, I think that the main way that this is going to happen if we institute the five elephant plan is that it's going, if, if you look at the world today, there's kind of a, a hierarchy, and there are people that are you know, higher up on this hierarchy and lower down. And this is the hierarchy of awesomeness. <laughs> elephants are really awesome. And so if everybody has five elephants, I mean, that's what we're, again, that's what we're proposing, that kind of levels the playing field, and also, like, raises the playing <laughs> field. <laughs>
history are doomed to repeat it, and that's why we have like wars and stuff because we forget how bad they are. So elephants remembering those things would bring about world peace. <laughs> um, so like you know, that's really important. Also, um, hmm, world peace. <laughs> Uh, they can also cook delicious souffle. <laughs> oh, shit, we didn't think of that. <laughs> and again, we think that's important to uh, to raising you know the culture and the the deliciousness in people's homes and the awesomeness in people's homes. Isn't that awesome? Don't you like souffle? Isn't parfaits better than souffle? <laughs> <laughs> certain animals that are talented in the cheetah plant, we would consider bringing in perhaps a, a, a free cheetah plan to supplement. That said, we think that like as delicious as parfait is, that is a dessert, whereas like soufflés are the main course, and uh, anything that is important and you know, healthy to encourage um, having main courses instead of just dessert all the time. So in that sense, um, I'm not sure if soup things are healthy, but they're more healthy than dessert. And so, and so uh, elephants are going to make uh, everybody healthier. Um, so we think that's very important. So uh, let's look at what we heard in that last speech, some side proposition. So first of all, he was wondering questions like, how are we going to transport the elephants? And what are we going to do when the elephants get sick? And whether or not they're going to have health care? Well, no, they're not going to have health care. They're going to have vet care. We're talking about elephants. <laughs> um, and then at one point, he's like, uh, so then we're just going to like magically get these elephants. That is a direct quote, by the way. Um, so like, he says it's like it's a bad thing. <laughs> we're going to magically get Elephants for everybody? You're proposing magic. Not only that, but uh, he's concerned that, like, you know, not everybody will be able to get a full piano from their elephants, and they might only get a third of the piano. First of all, as my partner astutely pointed out, most piano players statistically do not use a full piano. Second of all, we think that like not everybody necessarily needs their own piano. Like you know, more than one person can play piano. We think this is going to encourage like collaborative uh, music playing. This is also going to like raise the level of culture and the like, level of awesomeness in our society. Um, we think that's pretty good. Uh, so yeah, I thought the piano from each you know person's elephants. We think that that's actually good because it encourages collaboration. Um, <laughs> like again, he said defeating people using elephants like it's a bad. Um, and we think this is kind of like, you know, the theory that like if you give everybody a gun, there will be no crime. Again, like there are reasons like in terms of memory why elephants will, will promote world peace, but also because like, you know, if everybody has elephants that are capable of conquering the world, then nobody will conquer the world. It's mutually assured, assured world elephant conquering. Um, <laughs> not respecting any enactment from culture, I think I dealt with that in that like we don't think that just because elephants live together and uh, peacefully coexist doesn't mean they have to get rid of their culture. We think that's pretty great. And uh, never letting go of the grudge and never forgetting, never forgiving. We think that elephants are kind-hearted uh, species. We think that they will forgive. We, although, as I've already gone over, we do not think that it's good for elephants to forget. Um, we think that will, again, encourage world peace.